Okay, okay this is part two, Cynthia, um, uh, elite Illuminati, an ex-elite Illuminati sex slave. Part two. There was times when would she get where she couldn't find anything else to amuse herself with me. Where she had to go somewhere to make a business deal or grocery shopping or whatever she thought she had to do. So she had nannies take care of me. They weren't your normal nanny. I remember the first one she took me to. After I went potty, she would check it. And if it was poopy, she would hand me an ice cream stick. I was to take it out of the potty on the ice cream stick and eat it like it was a candy bar <laughs> or some kind of a treat. If I didn't, then I would sit on the potty until I could poop. If I didn't mind or I rejected eating it, then I would just keep eating more all day long. They would make you eat more? All day long? Yeah. Yeah. Nothing to drink either, nothing to eat, no toys, no nothing, just the same. Old. Dark rooms all the time? Do they wear masks a lot? They were, yeah. They were like nurses and I don't know what, the, like nuns, nurses, just not your everyday people. And like lawyers and they had to like their own hospitals and police officers that like guarded the hospitals and stuff. When, sorry, that's I'm jumping ahead. Yeah. Okay. Um, Go ahead. Um, like the cousins, and you like. <laughs> she was trained. She was trained from the time she yes. was. She was trained to be a sex slave. She was sold to the rich people in Beverly Hills, and like lawyers and doctors. And and it's your story, but At I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was taken into a room with my cousin. He was about eighteen. He was to show me what an orgasm was, what cum was, what the whole sex scene was all about. But it had to be done orally. I was to learn how to, um, uh, be able to satisfy a man they were training you to be able to satisfy a man? Orally. Make sure he could always have an orgasm. I was never was supposed to speak about it, but it scared me so bad the first time it happened. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what was going on. And I ran out and started telling everybody that I knew what it looked like. Next thing I remember, I had welts all over my back, my legs, anywhere you couldn't see. Your fingers, the scars, where the scars on your fingers? My left ring finger. One day I was, uh, decided to trip off out of my hidden little torture chamber and watch my mother cutting onions and garlic and all that good stuff to put in dinner. Well, instead of sending me back in my room, which I thought she might, or let me just watch her cook a meal, she went on about her business and was chopping and chopping and chopping and singing her little song. You were how old? Three years old? old? About three or four? Three years old. Next thing, the knife was going up. I could see it. Bam! As hard as she could, she stabbed it my finger into that board so hard that she had to cut the board off around my finger and then do whatever she could to try to get rid of the evidence so it couldn't be seen but I still have the scar through my finger today of course nobody ever noticed it or asked about it then, I think is when I was, uh, 
<laughs> in this family, the rule was the age of puberty, the little girl was to be diversionalized by the father. Did your mom, did she get like did money and jewels or, or like trips? I mean, like, didn't, were you telling me that for what they did to you and like the money they made off you, she was like provided with? They had brand new house, brand new car. The oil company, tell them the name of the oil company. The cherry? Cherry, they were given a whole mountain of oil fields. It was called Cherry Signal Hill and they changed it to Cherry Hill. It was in Long Beach, California. They were very wealthy. And they were getting the money from what they from did? me. From you. I would do the deed and they would For the, the, pay. The, were the, didn't you tell me, who were they? The Masons, the Shriners, remember? You told me that? Yes. And I never mentioned the Shriners to her about my Master Mason being a Shriner. She mentioned Shriner first. And so that's why I was like, whoa. But the Shriners got just as much of a reputation as Disney does. I'm sorry, go ahead, Cindy. Yeah, my stepfather, Paul, was a Mason, a Shriner. He had a special ring. He was very high up in this family they had. They called them a family. I don't know. It was just a certain group of people with a certain amount of kids they, that didn't go outside of any. They were just them. Nobody else. You couldn't be friends with nobody else? No. and No. Do you went to regular school, though? I went to school. But you were forbidden to communicate with the other kids. I was moved a lot. I didn't stay in anyone's school for more than a month before teachers would notice I was different or I would try to make a friend and it would be found out. Oh, she's got a friend over here, it's gonna blah, 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 blah. move her, move her, move her, she's gonna talk. And then teachers this. seeing your bruises and stuff in your body? Yeah. And uh, but before the last move, he took me off into the room and had sex with me. And then Broke my virginity. Your this is the nice dad that was kind of nice. This was my stepdad, the Mason. What was his name? Paul Martin. What was the other guy's name? My adopted father. Yeah. William R. Thompson. He started his own insurance company. What was the name of it? William R. Thompson. Really? Yep. Okay, we're gonna be right back to part three.